if I have a greenhouse, okay, so I'll probably plant several plants and let it grow. No, there's a better way to do it. Try to hang it, try to push it, try to pull it. We're standing in this place that's a hub of thinking creatively about how to maximize everything. Exactly. I took a journey deep into southern Israel, to the Arava. The Arava is a long desert valley along the border with Jordan that stretches from the Dead Sea to the Gulf of Elat. And it's incredibly hot and dry here. Surprisingly, it's also a mainstay of Israel's agriculture industry. What a place, Nadav. No place like home. Look at this beautiful view. This is what we see every morning from our window. And it's very much not what you would expect from uh, the middle of the desert, quote unquote. More agriculture than many areas of the country have. Probably greener than most of, a lot of the places you've been at. And uh, this is, you know, the land of the endless summer. Right now we're in Chatzeva, a cooperative agricultural village in southern Israel, or a moshav, as it's known in Hebrew. It was founded in 1965 as part of Israel's desert agriculture revolution. With 150 independent farms operating today, Chatzeva remains a key player in making sure desert farming continues to thrive. Nadav, who oversees the entire Moshav, gave me the grand tour. So, let, let's go back to your origin story. You're not of this place. I'm not originally Originally of this place. Yes. How did you end up in the middle of the desert? The Zionist dream still, you know, exist and lives in our hearts. What is that in your mind? So look, we <clears> are about, we're half a mile from the Jordanian border, and to the west, also nothing there. We've decided we want to grow our kids here and basically make the desert bloom, bring a different kind of Israel here on a human level. And right now, I'm the CEO of the Moshav. So I wasn't even born here, not raised here, but now I, you know, as they say, I run this joint. When you get into your car and you drive south of Be'er Sheva into the desert, you see a lot of yellow, you know, this is desert, why would I want to live here? And then you take a left turn into the Moshav and you see a lot of green. And every time we have people that haven't spent much time here, they say, it's amazing. I didn't realize it's so much green here. The Israeli market is very small. How many people in Israel eat? What, eight million people? It's nothing. We grow for about 80 million people because people are, you know, persistent, they're trying, and it's working. The topsoil here is something that almost nothing grows on. And we can see date farms and grapefruits, peppers and tomatoes and all kind of, uh, you know, it's the good stuff. It's a ton of things that don't belong in this place, basically. It's a ton of things that don't belong in this place. Okay. And, and also the knowledge that people mm -hmm. have gained through the years, we don't keep it to ourselves. Basically, we're teaching the world how to feed itself. Now you've entered Moshav Chatzeva. See the, the day trees mm -hmm. and the little uh, turnabout that says in the Negev, the people of Israel will be tested by David Ben Gurion. This is how we live our so, life. So far, it seems like you've done well with this test. So, so far, so, so far. good. So far, so good. These are called net houses. They're not green houses. This is a greenhouse. You would grow tomatoes in it, cucumbers. And to our left, it's tunnels, eggplants, watermelons. You can see we also grow corn here. Israeli agriculture is very high-tech. We moved from throwing some water on the ground and see whatever grows to drip irrigation, hanging the plants, making more out of the three major things that you need for growing something. You need soil, you need water, and you need sun. So sunlights we have year-round. Water, we don't have good quality water here, but we drill for about a mile deep and we take very salty water, mm -hmm. but we learn how to use them in the fields. Even the soil that we step on, most of the crops are not grown on this soil. So we bring soil from other parts of Israel we put it on the topsoil that already exists and then we grow on it. About a hundred years ago, when Jews from mostly European countries, cold countries, when they moved to Israel, they wanted to tear off this image of the Jew that was always looked down and always were looked down at. And overnight, they, they shed the, the shell of uh, the diaspora of like, of 2,000 years of being detached from the land and the country. You saw a new Jewish face. You saw the strong farmer. You don't see the black clothes. You don't see the long beard. You see the strong Jew that is moving to Israel and making the desert bloom. It's sort of like the ultimate test of character. You can't be soft and make it in the desert. Even if you look into the biblical narrative, you can't ever achieve something of virtue or quality without going through a desert phase, without the hardship and the struggle. Let's show you some of our greenhouses. We talk so much. Here you go. Welcome. We have the cherry tomatoes, which are very famous for Israel. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the way that we grow them, this is a stem, right? This is a tomato stem. Mm -hmm. So it should just grow from the ground straight up, right? But what we do here, we 
take it around, back and forth, back and forth. Why? When you have a single stem that goes up, you can have 20 tomatoes, mm -hmm. 40 tomatoes. Here you can take out of one stem, one plant, about 400 tomatoes. Why do we even need to grow things on the ground? We have strawberries, there's a little bit of dirt in it, and they use whatever water they need. And because they're in an angle, whatever leftover water flows down to a water tank and you reuse the water. Here you have mint. Now why grow mint on the ground? Why not grow it on a post? Let it go up. Easier to pick, less insects, less bugs. If I have a greenhouse, okay, so I'll probably plant several plants and let it grow. No, there's a better way to do it. Try to hang it, try to push it, try to pull it. We're sending this place that's a hub of thinking creatively about how to maximize everything. Exactly. So, tell me how it is. Just dig into it. Oh, this is juicy. Great, huh? Mm. Very sweet. I can live off of that. Mm. So right now, we're going to a date farm that a friend of mine is working on. It's right over there. So now we're gonna meet Tomer. Hey, Tomer. Hi, nice to How's meet you. How's it going? <laughs> okay. Coming up? Yeah, yeah, we're coming up. So Tomer, yeah. you're the real deal. When we think about the people out in the desert making agriculture happen, you're the face of that. I appreciate it. I want to teach my kids also to know what is hard work and why we're here in Israel. I need to do it myself before I teach other people to do it. So I take the challenge on myself right now. So I imagine, Toma, most of the work happens at height, and we're here mainly because we want to go up. So let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up. So here you can actually see the view. On this side is the Moshav itself, mm -hmm. more bay plantation, greenhouses. When you get up at height, it's even more shocking how much there's a contrast. You're in the middle of the most deserty desert you could imagine. This is exactly the future of agriculture in Israel. If Tomer and her likes will choose to come here to learn about it, to work in this environment for a year or two, I can see a bright future because this is gonna be a very high tech field of expertise. We think here in the Arava, this is the, the next field where Israel is going to lead the world, and Tomer is a perfect example for it. The early pioneers who came back to the land in the late 19th century endured incredible hardship trying to cultivate the land again. And over time, with the development of technology, things got easier. Today, things are much different. Israel became an exporter of technology and knowledge to the farthest corners of the earth. In fact, in deserts around the world today, plants and fields are growing with technology coming out of the land of Zion. So we've seen how Israeli innovation has helped with the desert problem. But now we're gonna meet something slightly different. We're on our way up to Netanya, which is in the northern coastal area of Israel, to meet with Cropex, which is this new startup company who've developed a new sensor package, which is supposed to help farmers around the world have a deeper understanding of exactly what's happening in their field in real time. Tomil, we're about to see a demonstration of the system. Do you want to introduce your all-star team before we uh, get started? Yeah, sure thing. Avi recently did Aliyah from New Jersey. Uh, he's an agronomist and data scientist on the agronomy team. And Guy is the VP of agronomy. He knows everything there is to know. So he's the, the guy with the plan, huh? Exactly, the brain. Mai uh, grew up in Los Angeles. She's uh, part of the customer service team. So, so this is it. I mean, I was expecting you know some heavy machinery. It looks like you guys brought the same equipment I have at home. It's just uh, one power tool, and that's all you need. All I do is I find where I want to put it in the field, and then I dig a hole. Just make sure. And then we just screw it into the ground as such. And it's that simple. I can now see the data from the soil. I can see that it was recently fertilized. I can see the moisture content of the soil, and I can see soil temperature. So with this data that I get immediately, the farmer can make much better decisions. CropEx represents Israeli agritech at its finest. It's a smart farming device that gives farmers real-time insights into the conditions of their soil, and it's being used around the world. CropEx is part of the agtech revolution. So we have sensors in this device that measure the moisture of the soil, electroconductivity, which is salinity, the saltiness of the soil. Uh, we connect that to nitrogen and fertility and temperature. Uh, the part that you see out of the ground transmits to the cloud. What have farmers been doing so far? In many places, yeah, they do this. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Still today in the first world. Yeah. 
we create much more value, between 10 and 20% yield increasement, which is, which is huge. huge. With every sensor that is installed across the globe, our system continues to learn and to get smarter. And the power of the system grows because the system Because has, well, the system is getting more the clever. System, yeah, exactly. When I was done with my previous startup, I really looked for something different that kind of had a do-good part to it. Uh, you know, since then, I haven't looked back. Yet again, the challenges Israelis are facing have led to solutions that impact people everywhere in the world. This is what happens when God blesses a nation, promises to prosper them, and then empowers them to carry out his promises. If you can make it in the Arava, you can probably make it anywhere in Israel. If you want to be a pioneer in any field of expertise, this mm -hmm. is the place to be. It's a huge honor being able to expose Israel to the world through a positive technology, you know, that, that really helps save the globe. From the Arava, where people are putting in the hours and developing methods to make the desert bloom, to innovative Israeli tech that is creating a global smart farming network. The future looks bright, and the sky's the limit. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions in comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.